Hi, everyone. Hope that you're having a fantastic state of search. I'm Tom Shapiro, the CEO of Stratbeat, which is a B2B branding, marketing, and web design agency in Boston. And in this session, we're going to be looking at how to transform your blog into a lead generation engine. So not sure if you've ever had the experience where you've noticed a company returning to your blog over and over and over again, but that's, that's exactly what we experienced. Uh, one time we found that a company visited our, our blog and our website 24 times within a two month period. And um, they, during that time, they did not uh, submit a form. They didn't go through any traditional conversion event. And so if this happens to you and you're relying only on Google Analytics, uh, then you're not going to be able to extract the type of information that you need in order to convert that into an actual lead. Uh, and unfortunately, what we see in the marketplace is a lot of companies are relying on Google Analytics for measuring the performance of their blog and then making uh, marketing decisions based off of that data. Um, and what I'd like to say is that Google Analytics is helpful, but it's only half of the story. And if you're relying on Google Analytics for to, to maximize your lead generation from your blog, you're never going to do it. Uh, and that's where the magic of IP detection comes in. So you really need to be marrying up that data with IP detection software. Um, there are lots of uh, fantastic uh, packages out there. We use a package called Lead Feeder, uh, but there's also uh, packages like Lead Forensics. And if you use marketing automation software, uh, there's a certain degree of IP detection there. However, I would warn you and caution you that uh, the the uh, sophistication of the IP detection software in marketing automation packages tends to be weaker than the standalone applications. So what does IP detection do? Well, it enables you to identify who exactly is on your website, which companies, right? And then if you uh, integrate your CRM system with the IP uh, detection software, then you can also identify specific individuals. Um, but at the very least for someone new who's never been to your website before, uh, you can identify the company. And then if you're able to use LinkedIn or other software to identify who you would want to target within that company, um, it provides you with a roadmap of how to conduct outreach based on precisely who's on your, uh, uh, on your website at the time. And then also precisely what they're interested in. Now, how do we know what, what they're interested in? The IP detection software will reveal to you not only which company it is, and as I mentioned, in certain cases, which individual at that company it is, but also when they came to your site, how they came to your site, which pages they visited, in what order did they visit, and how long did they spend on each of those pages, giving you an amazing amount of information in terms of what are they interested in, right? And so uh, I look at our IP detection software every single morning. It's the first thing that I do. Why? Because then I can see who has been on our site in the last 24 hours, and I can conduct outreach accordingly. And this can be 100% contextually relevant. If they were spending a lot of their time on SEO blog posts, I'm going to do outreach on SEO. And if they uh, are looking at content marketing blog posts, then obviously I'm going to conduct outreach uh, and start a conversation with them about content marketing. The same with brand strategy, the same with web design, the same with behavioral analytics. doesn't matter what it is. We customize the outreach accordingly. Um, now, you might be asking, well, whatever happened with that company that visited uh, the Strategy blog 24 times within two months? Well, we understood through the IP detection software who they were. We conducted a very, very customized outreach based on what they were looking at in each of those visits, wound up converting them into customer, and they've been a customer of ours for years now. And so this stuff really works. So take a step back, uh, who is giving you all this advice, how to transform your blog into a lead generation engine? Well, again, I'm Tom Shaviro. In addition to uh, founding and managing Stratabeat, uh, I wrote a book called Rethink Your Marketing, provides you with seven strategies for unleashing new growth in your business based on lateral thinking. Uh, the last company that I was at, I was the 85th employee and through employing new and different uh, marketing strategies, we were able to take it from 85 employees to over 700 employees in under five years. Uh, and through my career, I've worked with many, many different companies, startups, mid-sized companies, and some of the largest companies uh, in the market, including Intel, GE, AT&T, United Healthcare, Ameriprise, Kraft Foods, 10 different brands at Procter & Gamble, Hewlett Packard, on and on. And so I'm gonna be sharing those experiences and those learnings with you today. All right, so let's get into it. 
uh, beyond IP detection software, how can we transform our blog into a lead generation engine? And the first thing I'm gonna recommend is that for each blog post that you are about to publish, I want you to brainstorm at least 35 potential blog post titles. Titles is where you're gonna get them to click through. It's, it's critical, it's really important. And if you don't spend enough time on this, you're probably not gonna maximize your click-through rates. And so <coughs> if you're coming up with just one blog post title, obviously that's insufficient. If you're brainstorming a few and then picking the best, uh, that's also highly insufficient. The reason why 35 is such a good target for you is because it forces you to get more and more and more creative. It forces you to think of potential titles that you never would have thought of before. Now the publication website uh, Upworthy has about two to three million unique visitors every month, I believe. Uh, they have a formula where they brainstorm 25 blog post titles for every blog post. And that's fantastic. What I'm suggesting is go even further beyond that. And you don't have to do this for every single blog post. Just do it for your most important posts, right? And then you, you'll be very surprised at the results. For example, recently, Stratavi published a blog post called Make Big, Bold, Boundless Bets. <laughs> a lot of alliteration going on there, right? So clearly, with this particular post, we were going for impact. We wanted to share a very uh, important belief that we have as a company that we feel really moves the needle, pushing all of your chips into the center of the table, making strategic, bold bets in order to unleash new, new growth. Uh, whereas, you know, what you find with a lot of companies as they get older, as they, um, uh, you know, grow in size, the thinking becomes ossified. And, and so people become more and more risk averse. And so that was the whole point of this. Um, but it took 35 different tries, different brainstorms of different potential blog post titles to come up with make big, bold, boundless bets. Now, how did it do? Well, uh, in a recent e-blast, it wound up being... Uh, our most successful email blast over the past two years it had the highest open rate and the highest click rate uh, out of any of our emails. And so, you know, going through the brainstorming process can be, can be very powerful. Okay, what else can you do to increase the leads from your blog? I'm going to strongly urge you to lean on neuroscience here. How does the human brain operate? And then we're going to capitalize on that. And to do that, I want to ask you to evoke an emotional response out of your readers. So uh, the Harvard Business School professor, Gerald Zaltman, uh, states that 95% of buying decisions are made by the subconscious mind. We think that we're in full control of everything. We're very rational creatures. Actually, we are driven by the subconscious and emotions are a big part of that. Now, the neuroscientist Antonio Damasio ran interesting studies on people who had damage to the part of the brain that triggers emotion. So in other words, these people couldn't feel any emotion. They couldn't feel happy. They couldn't feel sad. They couldn't feel excited. They couldn't feel angry. Uh, and what he found was they couldn't, or, or they found it extremely difficult to make any decisions, including purchase decisions, because they couldn't feel strongly enough about option A versus option B. They couldn't feel strongly enough about product A versus product B. So they would endlessly waffle. And so what he found was emotions are an essential ingredient in purchase decisions. So if you want more of your blog readers, more of your site visitors converting, right? Making that decision to convert, to fill out the form, to sign up for your webinar, uh, whatever it might happen to be, you want to strive to evoke an emotional response. Decisions are based on emotions, then we rationalize them afterwards. And you might say, okay, well, yeah, that's fine with B2C, but what about B2B? You know, a lot of people think that B2B needs to be boring, needs to be very straightforward, needs to be very technical, that, you, you know, you can't really apply the same B2C marketing strategies and tactics. Uh, and I'm here to tell you that's not true. The human brain is the human brain. And I don't care if you're at a B2B organization or a B2C organization, your brain is constructed the same way. Google and the corporate executive board backs that up. They found in a study specifically of B2B organizations, B2B brands achieve twice the impact twice the impact with a target audience when using emotional marketing, right? So whether you're B2C, whether you're B2B, whether you're anything else, it doesn't matter. The human brain is the human brain. We are creatures that, that, that uh, behave based on the subconscious, right? 
And so you need to be evoking an emotional response if you want more decision-making being made while your site visitors are on your site and you want more and more conversions. All right, from neuroscience, let's move to behavioral science. So what's the way to use behavioral science to generate more leads from your blog? Well, I would recommend that you use behavioral analytics. So behavioral analytics is looking at things like heat mapping, click mapping, attention mapping, scroll mapping, uh, in order to understand the digital body language of your site visitors and specifically your blog readers. <coughs> Many companies use this type of software on their product pages or their service pages or you know, some type of a checkout uh, process and they don't do it on their content. And I, I think that's a missed opportunity, a major missed opportunity, because you can, under, you can understand much more, you can gain many more insights by looking at how they're consuming your blog posts and your content in order to understand what it is they like, what they don't like, where they get tripped up, where they find friction, uh, and you can optimize accordingly. Speaking of friction, certain behavioral analytics packages uh, give you an actual friction score. So you can see which pages are producing a lot of friction and unhappy site visitors uh, and which pages are actually, you know, very easy experiences, uh, very good experiences for your site visitors uh, leading to happy site visitors. And then breaking down, you know, what would make up friction, right? Like what is friction on a website? So it could be things like rage clicking where someone thinks that something is clickable and they keep on clicking and clicking and clicking, but it's not clickable, it's not linked. Uh, or uh, click errors, right? You click and it takes you to the wrong place. Or it could be mouse outs where your cursor goes uh, off the screen, meaning you're not paying attention to what's on the screen anymore. Uh, lots of fantastic behavioral intelligence tools to help you do all of this. Um, if you're a larger organization, you might wanna look at Decibel or Clicktail. Uh, if you're a mid-sized organization, you might want to look at Mouselow. We use Mouselow a lot. Uh, Full Story, VWO, Hotjar, we use Hotjar a lot as well. Uh, and you want to marry up all that quantitative behavioral intelligence with qualitative behavioral intelligence as well. And the way you do that is through video recordings of your site visitors. So these are actual users. These are actual people on your blog, reading your blog. Uh, these are not testers. This is not done in a lab. This is not a focus group. These, this is live. This is real. Um, and what you see with the software is everything that's going on on their screens. And so in our blog, we found it interesting. The normal pattern in our blog for a reader is to scroll down and they might scroll up again and down, but it's a very vertical pattern. It's very predictable. And then we came across this pattern, which is kind of, you know, the reader was going berserk, or at least their cursor was. So the white lines here is mapping their cursor. And they were going to the, you know, side to side, they're going diagonally, they're going right to left and left to right, and they, they're going all over the place. And what we uncovered was whenever we embedded a video in one of our blog posts, we found this pattern. And so what we interpret this to, to be is much more engagement with the post um, whenever we're embedding a video. The, the insight there is, okay, we, we really need to add many more videos to our blog. And so we never would have gotten this just with click mapping or heat mapping or scroll mapping. We really needed to see the video recordings in order to, to glean that insight. All right, let's talk about design. How much do you think design matters in terms of driving relevant traffic to your website? Well, it actually matters a lot. And so Stratabee maintains a database of B2B websites. So this is B2B, but we maintain a database of hundreds of B2B websites and we grade them on many different factors, one of those being design. And what we have found is the sites that were marked with good design, so the, the sites that were designed well, produce 441.7% higher traffic than sites with bad design. And so design really does matter. If you want qualified traffic, which can lead to qualified leads, then you know, pay attention to your design, invest in your design, it's worth it. And here's one that you probably haven't thought of. So surveys, you know, people talk about it for, for uh, interaction, they talk about it for voice of the customer, but it can also lead to much greater lead generation results as well. However, most companies do surveys wrong. So what do you find at most companies? They launch one survey and then they wait and they wait and they wait and they wait and then they tally up the, the results and then they come up with one set of conclusions. Uh, that is too broad. It's not hyper-targeted enough. Uh, and so what we find is 
your data is going to be skewed because you're, you're, you're targeting too broad of an audience. Um, and also, it, it's not going to get uh, the, 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 the response rate that you want because it's not as contextually relevant, it's not as contextually targeted as it could be. And so what we like to do is highly customize our surveys and launch at least 10 surveys at a time. So if you go to the strategy blog, you'll find at least 10 surveys running at any given time. And they're all highly contextually relevant. If you're on an SEO post, you might find a survey that's about SEO. If you are on a post about brand strategy, you're going to find a survey about brand strategy. If you're on a post about blogging, then you might find a survey about blogging, but we make it hyper contextually relevant to the exact page. And we launch lots and lots of these so that we can extract much cleaner, better insights to the, to the relevant target audience. And not only that, but what we find is even if we don't require someone to enter their email address into the survey, we find that about 70 or 80% of the people will actually hand over uh, their email address. And we found this for ourselves. We found this for several clients as well. And so not only is it great for extracting more relevant insights, but it's also fantastic as an email capture tool itself in the lead generation process. All right, with SEO, we also wanna see, okay, how can we use SEO, but, but use SEO in a way that's, that's gonna generate exponentially greater results, right? You know that you should be optimizing your blog posts, right? You already know that. SEO is very important, very relevant for driving highly qualified traffic precisely when they're interested uh, and receptive to your message. Um, how do you then 2X, 3X and 4X those results? So let's say that uh, someone is looking for a business line of credit. They go into Google, they type business line of credit. And what is the first result that pops up? Okay, it's from NerdWallet. Let's take a look at that. So business line of credit, how it works and best options. This is the number one result in uh, Google for business line of credit. So yes, I want to write a post and I want to target business line of credit but how can I get more value out of that post? How can I make sure that that post that I want to rank on business line of credit is also, also going to rank on many other terms? What I wanna do is I wanna take that, that piece that's already ranking in Google position number one, and you can also do this for what's ranking in position number two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way down Google page one. Uh, but in looking at the number one piece of content, right, in position one, what we want to do is look at, okay, that one piece of content by NerdWallet, what else is it ranking on Google page one for? And so here you can see it's ranking in position one for all these other highly related keywords, right? Anything from getting a business line of credit to how to qualify for a line of credit, new business line of credit, on and on and on. And so if that one piece of content is already ranking on Google page one for other queries, right? Other keywords, then you can mix in those other keywords into your piece to give you a better shot at also ranking for all these other keywords. Google, just reverse engineering Google reveals exactly what Google is looking for. So it's a fantastic way to, again, 2X, 3X, 4X your uh, organic search results uh, in a very easy, low hanging fruit type of way. All right, now you know CTAs, but you may be using them in a way that's not gonna maximize your lead generation. So what I'm gonna tell you is the way to maximize your lead generation using CTAs is you want to base them as much as possible on behavioral cues. So sure, you're gonna have some static CTAs there. We have static CTAs too, but you also wanna be testing be CTA is based off of behavioral cues, right? They do this, we're gonna show them this message because it aligns perfectly with their digital body language, with their behavior on your site. Uh, so let me give you an example. Uh, in the strategy blog, we uh, tested a new CTA based on the behavior of the reader scrolling down the page at least 70%. Now we have very long blog posts. They're typically around 2000. They could even be 3000 words in length. If someone goes 70% of the way down the page, then they're interested, right? They're engaged. And so that's when we hit them with our request uh, to sign up for our mailing list, right? And just by that, that one test waiting until they went 70% percent uh, down the page before we hit them with this offer, 
we increased our opt-in rate by 300%, just with that one test alone. Uh, and so I'm not saying that every test is gonna generate 300% increase in your results, but uh, this is a good indication that basing your CTAs off of behavioral cues rather than just having static CTAs is an excellent way to juice your lead generation results. All right, another thing that you can do is A-B testing. So a lot of companies, they'll A-B test things on their product pages, their service pages. They might uh, test, uh, they might A-B test things in their checkout process, right? Where the money is, right? But we would argue you got to be A-B testing like crazy in your blog as well. The more that you can be A-B test, you know, titles or content length uh, or CTA. CTAs is a fantastic one. You can uh, A-B test uh, surveys. You can A-B test having visual CTAs versus text-based CTAs. All these different ways to A-B test. Um, and even with a visual CTA, why not A-B test that as well? Just test the messaging, right? Um, or test the offer being made. So many different ways that you can be A-B testing in your blog. And of course, that's going to lead to greater lead generation results. Lots of great A-B testing tools. Uh, don't have time to go through all of them here, but uh, they're, they're fantastic. You know, A-B uh, AB testing tools across the board are fantastic. What I would say is test out a few of them and see what your personal preference is. Okay, so in summary, what we're looking for you to do is to build this lead generation framework. Uh, and that is uh, using IP detection and brainstorming 35 titles, evoking emotional responses out of your uh, blog readers, applying behavioral analytics and reviewing video recordings of your actual readers. Um, and then remember design matters, invest in design, it will generate higher traffic uh, to your blog. And then with SEO, of course, you want to be optimizing your, your uh, blog post, but look at the related keyword strategy that I walked you through. And that's a way to 2x and 3x your organic traffic results. Uh, Behavior-based CTAs. So sure, you know, you can have CTAs everywhere, but if they're all static, it's not going to maximize your lead gen effort. So remember, make them behaviorally based. And then A, B test. Just keep on testing, testing, testing. So want to thank you uh, for attending this session at State of Search. I hope that you got a lot, of, a lot out of it. And I would encourage you to take at least a few of these concepts, a few of these strategies, and start applying them today. Start tomorrow. Don't wait. Get started today because they really do make a big difference in uh, increasing your lead generation results.